I started a, uh, I did a series on becoming worshipers here, oh, I don't know, months ago. And um, uh, it's all coming to, uh, it's all, I'm tying it all together, I guess. It's all, it's all coming to a place where we're going to, we're just going to have a greater relationship than we have, not that you can get a greater relationship than being a son of God, but um, we're going to know a greater relationship than what we've known so far. That's why it was started becoming worshipers. Praise, you know, is thanking the Lord, praising him for what he's done, what he's doing, what he will do, you know, <clears throat> and we see that in scripture. All through scripture, we start out in Genesis 1-1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void and darkness upon the face of the earth. And that term, um, God, uh, uh, Elohim, means creator. It means um, sovereign. And uh, sovereign doesn't mean he, he just can do anything he wants. That's just such a shallow definition. But sovereign is um, that he exists without any external support. He doesn't need anything to be God. He doesn't, there's, there's, there's nothing that, that can aid him in any way. Nothing that can aid him in any way. He is sovereign. And um, we see that after God creates man, now all of a sudden we see Yahweh. Um, Yahweh is where we get the word Jehovah, meaning uh, intimate God, the covenant keeper, grace giver who dwells with his people. Uh, and so here we see that this is, this is what he does. This is, this is, his, this is his performing uh, for our benefits. And then we see throughout the scripture all the, re the redemptive names of the Lord, you know, all the names of God, um, uh, Jehovah Makadishkam, the Lord our, our sanctifier, Lord Jehovah Sidkenu, the Lord our righteousness, Jehovah Rapha, you know, he's the Lord our healer, um, Jeho Jehovah Rohi, the Lord our shepherd, he is Jehovah Gamola, the Lord our recompense, you know, he'll repay. Um, and, and just on and on, his names kept being revealed, but when Jesus comes onto the scene, he starts talking about the Father. Uh, the, the 167 times Jesus revealed in Scripture um, the Father, the Father. He said, fear not, little flock, it's your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. And so we're, we, we come to the place of worship is praise is thanking him for what he's done, Worship is, is relating to who he is, and he is our, our father. And the scripture is clear, and we, we looked at it where Moses, you know, he, he's the one that wanted to just get with the father. He's the one that wanted to just get with God, be with him. And so he pitched his tent outside of a couple million people, he pitched his tent way outside, called it the tent of meeting, said anyone that wants to just get with God, go out there, you know, get with him. But nobody did but him. And um, so we see that uh, the Bible says in, in Psalm 4 then, Israel knew the acts of God, what he does, praise, right? Play the tambourine, clap your hands, all you people, praise him for what he's done. But Moses knew the ways of God. There was a deeper intimacy. There was a, there was a place where he went where uh, he, f he found out more than just God doing. He became intimate with God, and he became the most humble man on the face of the earth. Because in the presence of God, you, uh, you start to take on his character. It isn't just God heal me, God deliver me, I need, you know, I need some money here, Lord, I'm having a problem. And all those, we're in a corrupted, fallen world. God knows we have need of. Remember what Jesus says? You know, uh, God knows that you need all this. But there's a place that we go beyond that. And in that place, there's where our, our life is changed. Our character is changed. Who we are 
who we are becomes so different, so incredible. And that's where we are now, talking about the fatherhood of God. And we're on the fourth part of this now, the fatherhood of God. And so there's nothing more important in the Bible than the revelation of the fatherhood of God. Look, look at in Ephesians 3, 13 through 15, and it says this. Read it out loud with me. This is kind of our foundation text for these, these uh, teachings. It says this, Wherefore, I desire that you faint not at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. So we see that he's bowing his knee to the Father, of whom the whole family, not just in heaven, but in earth, is named. It's so important. The word family is the word, in the, in the Greek here, is they use the word patria, and um, it comes from the word pater, meaning father, um, and it, it, it means a fatherhood. And so we could say that I bow my knees to the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole, uh, the whole fatherhood in heaven and earth is named. The fatherhood. It's terrible, but, you know, this tonight, uh, statistics prove that almost 80% of children in the United States are going to go to bed without a father in the house. That's almost, that's what? That's sort of like, <laughs> I, was, I get medical journals that don't, it's just a thing with me. But anyway, I'm going through this stuff, and um, they, they showed that the United States, it takes more dep drugs for depression than any country in the world. The most opportunity, the most blessings, the most ability, you know, the freedoms, and yet it's 10% of the nation. I mean, you can't say that, gee, the United States is the greatest nation in the world. No, we're a nation that's forgotten our God. We're, we're a nation that hasn't bowed to a fatherhood. They say they, the world looks at a patriarch. Uh, uh, society is something evil. But there's an importance of it. God, he didn't, and we talked about this, you know, but God, God didn't create because he was lonely, you know, because he's the Lord thy God. I, he changes not. There would be no way he'd ever not be lonely. It didn't matter what he created. But he did. He wa he's got his love, and he wanted to express that love. And the only way that he can bring a created being into the place of knowing the fullness of his love, which the Bible declares that there's four dimensions to God's love. There's length, depth, breadth, and height. We live in a three-dimensional world. It's beyond this. And coming to him and worshiping him as our father, it'll bring us into a greater dimension that we, this world won't have the effect on us anymore. Even under the law, now the law, there's 613 laws in, in the Old Testament, or commandments. We could say, for some reason, the, the Christianity exalts ten. You know, the Ten Commandments. It's almost like the church's poster boy. Well, the Ten Commandments are ten commandments of relationship. The first four are how we relate to the kingdom of heaven. And the last six are how we allow the kingdom of heaven to relate through us. We could say the first four is having a relationship with God, and then the last six are how we have a relationship with people, signifying it's a lot more complicated to have a relationship with a person than it is with God. It's a lot harder to have relationship together than it is with God. He's easy. 
That's why Jesus says, come unto me, all you labor and are heavy laden. I'll give you rest, for my way is easy. My burden is light. Even though it's, more, it's easier to have a relationship with God than people, it seems like people look for their help and aid from people more than they do from God. Just saying. And wonder why then we have the most people in the world that are on depressant, uh, antidepressant chemicals. And why the majority of the greatest nation in the world, yet there's more people here, more children here going to bed without a father. That's sad. Paul says, don't, don't faint at the trouble I'm going through. It, the trouble I'm going through is why I'm bowing to the heavenly Father. The Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole fatherhood of heaven and earth is named. But relationships. God wanted to bring man. He created man, but he wanted them it, 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 one with him. Because God is love, so he needs us to know his love, which is length, depth, breadth, and height. It brings us into another dimension, another realm. Moses went to a tent, had a relationship with God. Israel said, God, we need food, we need water, we need healing. And God did all that. But they only knew the acts of God. Moses knew the ways of God. He was brought into a deeper place, a greater place. And that's what God wants for us. Not just gimme, 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 gimme. It's God, I want you. He knows what we have need of. He won't with if God did not withhold, right? <laughs> Romans 8 15. If God didn't withhold his only begotten son, how much more? Everyone say more? How much is more? Just there's always more. How much more will your heavenly father give good things for you? He didn't withhold his son. He's going to just give to you. That's the, that's, that's the element of the kingdom. That's the principle of the kingdom that we come into. It's all about giving. God gave to Adam. We rehearse, right? God gave to Adam when he first created him. Before he created him, he created everything. He even planted the Garden of Eden. And it wasn't a little garden, you know, like you'd use a rototiller in. It was miles and miles squared. Huge, massive. It was the Great plain States, you know, plus the garden. And he gives it all to Adam when he creates them. Hey, Adam, I'm giving you the dominion over all the works of my hand. Dominion means ownership. I'm giving you dominion. You can do whatever you want with it. Adam gives it away. He was deceived. Not Eve. Adam was deceived. He, 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 we won't go there. But he gives it away, and Satan now has authority over it. And so corruption spreads to everybody and everything. That's why it says in Romans 8, it says, All creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God because it's held in bondage under corruption. And the only way it's going to get let loose is for us to take our rightful place in the kingdom. Well, God didn't say, well, what are we going to do now? We lost everything. Satan is, you know, he's the prince of this world now. No, he says, I'll get it back. I'll give another gift. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whoever believes in him now will not perish, but have everlasting life. Who doesn't believe, though, will be damned. And then we receive, we couldn't even receive Jesus and ask him to come into our life. There would be no faith. But that was a gift. For by grace you're saved through faith, and that's not ours. It's a gift from God. 
And when we receive Jesus, he gifts us with righteousness, right? Romans 5, 17. If you will receive the abundance of God's grace and the gift of his righteousness, you'll rule and reign as a king in life by one Jesus Christ. Paul knew the, the importance of gifts. He says, he tells the, the Rome, he says, I desire to get to you. Read Romans 1. Romans 1. He, he, he tells him, I'm desiring to get to you so I can impart a gift. That's why we come together. We're gifters. We uh, each have gifts and we take the gifts that we've been given and we use it to gift other people. Here, I'll do, I know how to do that. I'm good at that. I'll do that for you. A lot of times, congregations think the pastor is just supposed to do everything. Be everybody for everybody. Do everything. Oh, you can learn that. Oh, good. yeah. You just, just go to school for that. I got a thousand educations I never wanted since I've been in the ministry. But if people would rise up and take the gifts that God's given them and apply it, boy, that will alleviate a lot of that. And then God says, you know what, that ain't it. That ain't all. When you receive Jesus, just ask the Father, Jesus says, and he'll give you another gift, the Holy Spirit. And as soon as we receive the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit gives us gifts. Tongues, interpretation, prophecy, words of wisdom, words of knowledge, discerning of spirits, miracles, supernatural faith, amen, and gift of healing. It's about gifts. Well, here we see the Father wants us in his family. Philip's translation says this, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom every fatherhood in heaven and earth is named. See that word. It isn't family. It's a fatherhood. I mean, we could, we could say family, but boy, that takes away a lot of the definition, doesn't it? There's a liberal power in embracing God as Father. Matter of fact, in the Old Covenant, under the Old Testament, we see that in Malachi 4, 5 through 6, I laid, set, sowed some seeds for this message yet last week, but listen, read it out loud with me. This is the, this is the last verses of the whole Old Covenant. The Old Testament, right? These are the last words. He says this, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Sixth verse, read it. And he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the earth with a curse. Wow. At the end of the Old Covenant, he says, the last thing is you do what I'm what, you, what I, you're supposed to be doing or I'm going to cover the whole earth with a curse. Say, well, he did that in the garden. God didn't curse nobody then. Remember, he held up the pack of seeds and says, here's what you, because you did this, here's what's coming up, guys. Thorns and thistles. You're going to have to work hard from the sweat of your brow now. Corruption came because of what you've done. And that's because of the earth. The earth is dirt. Ad, uh, Adama. And it produces whatever is planted into it. And look at Revelation 22, 21. This is the last verse of the New Testament. Are you with me today? Come on, you can't still be tired. You got an extra, you know. No, you didn't. You got less sleep, didn't you? I get the same no matter what. I don't need clocks no more. Revelation 22, 21. Here's the last verse in the whole Bible. In the last verse in the New Covenant, New Testament. Read it with me. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. What happened? Then between the last verse in the Old Covenant and the last verse in the New Covenant. What happened? Jesus came to introduce the Father. And he showed the perfect son, the heart of the son, perfectly to the father, and the heart of the father perfectly to the son. He says, I always do those things that please the father. 
I do I say what he tells me to say, I do what he tells me to do, what I or excuse me, what I see him do. He fulfills this scripture. Gives us an example, shows us. Now, he says, now let the grace of the Lord be with everybody. Now let the grace of the Lord be. There's a, it, we see people, you know, they, even ministers will say, yeah, God's going to curse the United States. You know that? No, he isn't. He's got to judge. I, I heard this one. Well, you know, if he doesn't judge the United States, he got to apologize for Sodom and Gomorrah. Jesus took the judgment of every man upon his life. When you receive Jesus Christ into your life, you receive the gift of righteousness as right as God. What, what, what took place between? Let's look at this. We'll go back through some, a little more review. But are you with me yet? Come on, praise the Lord. Help me preach, guys. Uh, when Jesus, who is the second Adam, took the curse upon his life, from that point, all who believe in him now receive the very nature of the Father. In 1 Corinthians 15, 47 through 49, we looked at more verses than this in, in 1 Corinthians 15, but here you need to see this. He says this, the first man was of the earth made of dust. Talking about Adam, right? He's the first man, or we could say the first representative of all man. The second man, meaning Jesus Christ, is the Lord from heaven. As was the man of dust, Adam, so also are those who are made of dust. And as is the heavenly man, so also those who are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the man of dust, read it with me, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly man. The climax of the whole Bible is just to know the Father. That's the point of the whole, all of Scripture. That was the purpose of creation. So everyone would get to know this father of love. Amen? The Hebrew word for Adam, remember, for man is Adam. Adam comes from the word Adama. Adama means soil, dirt. Adam came from dirt. What's the, what's the unique uh, element of dirt. It, it'll produce whatever you put in it. That's why I told you, man, I've been preaching this since the early 80s. But there is no such thing as an oil shortage. Because what the ground does is produces it. It wasn't by dinosaur bones or whatever it is. That it, that's foolishness. That's just insanity being spewed out on mankind. The ground just produces it. We're made of ground. What does your skin naturally produce? What? It what? It naturally produces what? Oil. What do you think the ground is doing right now? It's producing oil. Duh. That's why, when, of course, there used to be so much that it just bubbled up out of the ground everywhere. And it was time, and it was the fullness of time. I love Galatians 4, right? In the fullness of time, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law to redeem those who are under the law. But in the fullness of time is so important. There's fullnesses of time throughout history. In the fullness of time, God said, okay, you're going to use this to, to increase your society, to better your lives. It's bubbling up from the ground. Go ahead and draw it out and utilize it. And we've done that. And it's, it's not going to go away. It can't go away. Just because I wipe my brow 
and get the oil off so I'm not shining in front of the camera here doesn't mean that I'm never going to have oil on my head again. It naturally produces it. Well, it's another, we'll get into that one day, but had to be said, I don't know. Anyway, so the, 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 the dirt, the earth, you can, you can have, a, you can have a, a whole field of thorns and thistles and just brush and garbage. And the good thing about that is you can tear all that up and then plant good seeds and you can produce enough produce to bless and help everyone around. Right? That's us. You put the right seeds in and we'll be a blessing to everybody. But you've got to take away the brush and the garbage. Next week I'm really going to get into this. You're going to, it's going to be a great service. But what happens is the, the, the old stuff has to be torn up. That's why when John came preaching the, the, the repentance of dead works, right, and saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand, now the axe must be laid to the root of the trees. Trees that aren't bearing fruit. Because we're going to change things, the Father says. We're going we're gonna to have, have a family that is producing fruit, good things, wonderful things. We're going to build community. We're going to grow. We're, gonna, we're not going to be the ones to cause problems, to divide and, and destroy. We're going to be the ones that, that bring peace. Amen? How lovely on the mountains are the feet of them who preach good news, who declare peace. We're the ones that when Jesus came preaching this, that's what really uh, um, made this anger rise up in the uh, Pharisees, in the Sadducees, in the, in the priests under the Old Covenant. That's why Jesus uses the term, he says, you know, that you can't put new wine into old wineskin, otherwise the old wine, if you do, because of the activity of the new wine, it'll burst the old wineskin. You've got to have a new one. And that's the point. We, we as people in this world, we can change. We can change, but not because of what our efforts. By a supernatural way from God, and it's by His Word. Jesus declares that He is the Word of God. But the Word is a seed. And when the word is seeded into a life, it's going to bring forth the product of what God wants, right? Look, look at in Peter, 1 Peter 1, 22 through 23. Read it out loud with me. He says this, Since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit. I'm going to stop here. I haven't talked about that part of the verse yet. Next week I'm going to start to, because there's the deal about being a worshiper. And how we really allow God to bring great things out of us. Everyone in here that believes in the Lord Jesus Christ should be healing the sick, raising the dead, causing the blind to see, the deaf to hear. The, everyone, because that's a fruit, that's a fruit of the Spirit of God. That's life for us. He says this, since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit, read it, in sincere love of the brethren, love one another fervently with a pure heart. Fervently means white-heated, by the way. To where when you, take, to, when you, put, when you heat up two pieces of iron and you just, it, to the white, so they're white, that hot, they're white. You touch them together and then you let them cool off. You can't tell where they went together. They're one. They melted together, so there's no seam, nothing. And that's the word fervently, love one another with white heat. Jesus, he, he loved us with that love of the Father. And he, he constantly loves us with that love. Now, by the Holy Spirit, the love of God is poured out in our hearts by him if we deny that if we don't yield to that 
all of a sudden we don't become one, we create divisions, walls, barriers. He says, since in sincere love of the brethren, love one another fervently with a pure heart. Read 23 with me. Having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. So the word of God is seed. And as the seed goes into our life, it causes us to be born again. Born again. And we talked about that. We, we saw that in, in John 3, Jesus says, you know, um, uh, seventh verse, he says, you must be born again. I mean, it's a declarative statement of utmost importance. You must be born again. Before that, he says, well, you know, the, the that which is born of flesh is flesh. That which is born of spirit is spirit. You have to be born of water and of the spirit. And that water isn't baby baptism. That has nothing to do with the Word. You have to be born from the Word of God. But the, the, uh, the, the, the water is when a woman's water breaks and a child is brought into this world. You're born of water, naturally. Because he goes on the next verse, that which is flesh is flesh, and that which is spirit is spirit. You're not born again when you're baptized as a baby. There's really no such thing as baptism as a baby. It's, it's dedication. And what you're doing is the parents are dedicating their lives to train up that child in the way they should go so when they're old, they won't depart from the Lord. Amen? Born again. What, what, even if it was John's baptism of repentance of dead works, what dead works does that baby have to repent of? And how is that baby repenting of dead works? But in Jesus, we're baptized into life. We're, we're, we're changing our minds and saying, I'm going to let you start sowing into my life. You, Lord, Adonai, owner, master, ruler, you. You start speaking into my life, that's the word worship. We lay at his feet. We listen to him. Martha was cumbered about much business, making sandwiches for Jesus, right? Mary sits at his feet. Martha gets mad. Jesus, make Mary come in here and help me. He says, Martha, you're cumbered about much work. And he didn't say it was bad. Everyone got to eat. We should be good hosts. But he said, Mary chose that good part. She's worshiping, listening to me. And that's what a lot of people don't like to do, listen to God. Our minds go a mile a minute, you know, just all of a sudden, we're going to go into prayer. All of a sudden, otherwise, you know, you're like, you know, Bleh. all of a sudden you go into prayer and your mind's just to go in. Rather than letting him speak and listening. And then applying yourself, we purify our souls by obeying the Spirit. It gets out the junk so that we can produce good fruit. Worship. Worship. When a person's born again, their spirits become brand new. Their soul, though, their mind, will, and emotions, that has to be renewed. Romans 12, right? First chapter, it says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable form of service. Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so you can prove what's the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. There isn't three levels to God's will. It's just God's will. It is perfect. It is acceptable. It is, it is good. We're, we're, we're to transform our minds because our mind isn't, what we have it from the world is an enemy against God. We want to rationalize. We want to look at, well, or self-justify. And God's saying, just lay down. Humility. 
Just lay down. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. He'll lift you up. Just lay down. Just listen. You with me? Look at Romans 8, 15 through 16. I'll come back to my message here. He says, For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. In other words, you didn't receive a spirit that causes you to just be better in the law. It's not a spirit, again, a bondage to fear. That's why I tell you, there's 613 laws in the Old Covenant. Can you imagine ceremonial laws? You have to do this if you did this. You have to do this if this took place. This is what you got to do. And they were in fear constantly. Did I do things right? And then when things went bad in their life, under the law, well, you're cursed because you're not doing right and you're blessed be when you do good. That's why they came to Jesus and says, who sinned, this person or, or his mother or parents, because he was born blind. And Jesus said, what? Neither. Everything they did and judged was upon performance. That's why even, even <laughs> Christians, hey, the, Christians will say, you know, they'll, they'll judge on performance you, you go through something, what do you do? You go through a problem, there's a sickness, there's financial struggles, there's a, what do you do wrong? But when they're under, you know, when they go through problems, it's, boy, the devil's after me. But not you. He says, he hasn't given us a spirit of bondage again unto fear. What else does it say? But a spirit, what? Is it up there yet? But a spirit of adoption whereby we cry out, Abba, Father. The spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And that's the key. Because this word adoption, I really don't know... I, I think just out of, out of um, uh, maybe out of uh, intimidation, they use the word adoption because that's not really the word there. It's huiosia. It comes from the word huios. Huios meaning mature, son, battle ready fully matured, able to accomplish, able to stand no matter what. Technon is the word for baby, you know, a child, for the baby that needs the claustrum from the breast. But huios means, that's it, baby, you got it all. And that's the word here. So really, the scripture, in fact, look at Kenneth Weiss' translation, uh, how he translated it, which is, it's right. He says, read it, for you did not receive, is it up there? Thank you. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery again with resulting fear, but you received the spirit who places you as adult sons by whom we cry out with deep emotion, Abba, Father. See, the, the, the father uh, isn't a foster parent. He literally, when you get born again, you become, br you're brand new born again by God. Remember when we're born again, who's our mother? We looked at this in scripture. Heaven, right? You're bo we're born from heaven, and we saw in Romans. That it's, heaven's our mother. And he, he's, she, heaven's the mother of us all. And Jesus is the word, the seed. He's the seed. He's the sperma in the Greek. He's, he's the seed that brings life to everybody that calls on him. You know, a woman gets one egg, right, a month. One egg a month. God had to give guys 180 million sperm a day. You know, they don't want to ask for directions. They just, you know, hopefully one's going to just bump into it, you know. <laughs> I don't know. 
But here we see the word is, is the pregnator. This is the sperm. This is what's bringing life. That's why when there's conception in the natural, there's an explosion that goes on. When that sperm finds that egg, there's an explosion that goes on, and it's an, really a literal explosion, and it's an explosion where it bring, breaks out a brilliant light. <coughs> Jesus says he's the light that lights every man that comes into the world. But there are a lot of people that refuse to accept him. They abort that. They abort no, I don't want to accept. I don't want to... Publicly, i got to acknowledge Jesus? No. I'd rather sin in open and be a closet Christian. That's what... You know, I, I backslid. I became a drug addict and an alcoholic, man. And I'll tell you, when I get, recommitted my life to the Lord, I said, I'm going to live for Jesus the same way I lived in the world. And that day I went on the street, started preaching. Have, I've preached every day since then. I, don't, I find somebody, I share Jesus, because that's why I'm here. Amen. Look at with me in 2 Corinthians 5, 17 through 21. It says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. What does new creation mean to you? In the King James, I think it may be the word creature, but creation is the word. Is it, every, anyone in Christ is a new creation. Does it say just we're adopted into the family? You're just this old person and you didn't change really, and so you're going to come on in the kingdom and just try the best you can. Struggle through. He says, anyone in Christ is a new creation. Look at what it says. He goes on to say, read it. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Here's this word new. There's two words for new, by the way. There's the word, in, in the Greek, there's the word nuos, and there's the word kainos. The word nuos means renewed. If you took an old jalopy, you know, and you, you, you took out all the interior and you put in a brand new one. You took out an engine, put in a brand new one, drive train, transmission, you know, put in brand new, painted it all, sanded it all down, got it all, and then painted it, and it looks like it just came out of the showroom, right? But it'd be the same old car, but just renewed, nuance. This word, if any man's in Christ, he's a new creation, is the word kainos. Kainos means never existed before. Brand new. One of a kind. Not redone. That's why when we get born again, we're not adopted into a family. We're born by the word of the living God, First Peter, right? Born again, not of a corruptible seed, but of an incorruptible seed, which lives and abides forever. We're born again, brand new creations in Christ Jesus. He says this, he says, Behold, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a brand new creation, never existed before. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation that is that God was it that's why a lot of Christians they don't they think they're just re, renewed and you know it's just try the best you can and oh well who cares if if they're changed or not and so that what are they going to tell anybody give your life to Jesus maybe one day you get to go to heaven the, the gospel isn't give your life to Jesus so you can go to heaven one day. The gospel of Jesus Christ is give your life to Jesus and heaven will come into you today. You become brand new creation. Old things will pass away when we keep sowing the word into this now fertile soil. He says this. 
God was in Christ, 19 verse, reconciling the world to himself, not impeding their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. What are we supposed to be doing every day? Reconciling people into the kingdom. Give your life to Jesus. Not give your life to Jesus and he'll heal you. Give your life to Jesus, he'll make you wealthy. Give your life to Jesus and blah, blah, blah. But we're not wanting to build just this team of praisers. We're wanting to get worshipers, those that are going to allow his character to become their character, his life to become their life. So you give your life to Jesus Christ and you become one with him. Then see what he'll do for you. We're ministers of reconciliation. He says, now, then we are ambassadors for Christ as though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Isn't this good news? You become a brand new Christ, son of God. That's why in Jesus there's neither Jew, Greek, bond, free, male, or female. We're sons of God. Born again, brand new, never existed before. Oh, I got a computer sitting on top of my shoulders here that I got to get changed. I got to reboot it often. I, I got to download some uh, new programs. That's why we're, renew we're transformed by the renewing of our minds so we can prove the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Look at Ezekiel with me. Ezekiel 36, 26 through 27. He, he speaks of this. And he says this, I will give you what? A new heart. And I'll put what? A new spirit in you. When you get born again, this is what happens. You get a brand new spirit. He takes the greatest miracle God's ever done. He takes your spirit out, puts his in. There it is. It's all done. He gives you a new heart then. And what does he say about that heart? I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. He'll take that heart that isn't willing to absorb or take the seed of the word of God. We can intellectualize the word, become theologians. And we can, we can know all kinds of stuff. But if there's no change, all we did was no stuff. But when we really allow the Word to come in, when we're born again, the Word will really, it'll come into a heart that's fleshy heart, soft heart. And it'll start producing this Word. He goes on to say this. He says again, I'll give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I'll take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you will keep my judgments and do them. And it is in our effort. We apply ourselves to just a relationship with the Father. Just talk with Him. Let Him talk with us. Well, that's why when you open your Bible in the morning and, and read your Bible, open your Bible and read it every morning. You just say, talk to me again, Father. Talk to me this morning. It isn't, well, I've got to get my Bible reading done. It, that, that religious duty. Well, got to go to church today. Yep, that's because that's what Christians do. No, I want to come to have a relationship and become more intimate with the Father where my life is going to start producing the greatness that's been ascribed to my name. All his purpose, all his plans, let your will be done. Didn't he ask us to pray that way? Let your will be done. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. Where? In this earth as it is in 
heaven. Let heaven come. Not me getting to heaven one day or in the sweet by and by. We will be on that beautiful shore. Well, I don't know who's going to do that. I can't see that in Scripture. No sweet by and by. There's an incredible here and now, though. There's a blessed presence. But we have to take serious his presence. He said, I'll put my, take your heart out of you, stone, give you a heart of flesh, I'll put my spirit in you. When you're born again, he takes your spirit out, puts his in. That's incredible. Amen? I th that's phenomenal. That's a, what a miracle. Born again experience. That's why there's, he, Jesus says there's re rejoicing in heaven over one sinner that would repent, that would come. It's the explosion of the sperm and the egg. It's the boo 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 and the light. And there, can you imagine what heaven looks like? Every day, people giving their lives to the Lord. Every minute of every day. Every second of every day. It isn't our effort then. It's, it's, it, we just have to be willing to build a relationship with the Father. Listen to Him. Talk with them. Let them talk with us. I think it's Romans 8 and 10. He says, I'll, I'll, I'll put my laws in your heart. I'll write them in your heart. I'll put them in your mind. Then you'll do them. But before that, you're only going to condemn yourself for not doing them. Can I get a witness? by this relationship. So everything is from him, through him, and to him. Bless his holy name. It's his power. Religion is a terrible thing. Man's religion, this made up stuff, do this, do that. Do you know that most of the laws that, that uh, I, we just talk about the 613 laws in the Old Covenant, but man, there was thousands of laws. It was called the rabbinical laws. And there, if there was a dispute between Moses' law and the rabbinical law, ah, the rabbinical law won out because it was the person there enforcing. And they didn't want to be seen as wrong. There was 20-some thousand laws that they had to live by. And it depended on what district you were in, where you were. As I remember John... Um, uh, Osteen, John Osteen, the dad of, of, of Joel Osteen. And uh, I was in, in Germany doing this uh, convention, and John came over, and um, uh, I just got a kick out of this. It was in Baden-Baden, which is like our Las Vegas. And so it was, it was a little different. The guy that did the thing was uh, Carl Operman. He was the president of the greatest steel company in the world at the time, and, and uh, he pastored three churches besides, um, and uh, just a man on the go. But um, John comes over, and I got a kick out of this. I never heard it before. He, he looks at him and the pastors. He says, so what's sin here? It sound like churches to you? I thought, Good question. In other words, where, where's your liberty and where's the line of liberty stop? What do you call out as you can't do that but do this? And he did it. He wasn't mocking. He wasn't saying. He was serious. He said, I want to live within your parameters while I'm here. I don't want to, you know, I want to be able to speak truth into your lives not close you off to me. That's why the Bible tells us that don't let your liberty become a, an occasion for someone else stumbling. Basically, that's what he was saying. Let's love one another with white, fervent heat. Let's let the Word of God be sown into lives. If you've really been born again, you're a new creation in Christ. You, you're a person that never existed in this world before. Yeah, you have a past, but it was in the natural. That's why it says in 1 Corinthians, we read it you know, last, 
time, we won't this time, it says, therefore I know no man anymore after the flesh. Even though I did know Jesus after the flesh, I don't that anymore. I don't know anyone after the flesh anymore. I know you in Christ. You're a new creation. When you're born again, baptized as a baby, whatever, that doesn't mean nothing. It should have for the parents. It was they were they were declaring their uh, their um, uh, uh, commitment to an obligation toward that child. When I went through confirmation, that didn't make me anything. The only thing that can make me a child of God is the Word of God. We're born again, not of a corruptible seed, but of an incorruptible seed of the Word of God, which lives and abides forever. Amen? Well, praise the Lord. I'm going to do it. Exodus 33.20. Are you with me yet? Come on, guys. Shake it off, whatever it is. Let's do this. Open up. If anyone has ears to hear, let them hear what the Spirit of God is saying right now. Because we, we, this isn't just for your benefit. These are for the people you're working f with benefit. These are for your neighbor's benefits, your family's benefits. Because you are now a minister of reconciliation and God says, and I beseech you, that you're an ambassador to beseech people, I'm sorry, to uh, beseech people to be reconciled to God. Well, how? Why? Just to go to church? Or to let heaven come into a life? To cause somebody to be a brand new creation? A child of God where they can know the length and depth and breadth and height of his love? Big difference. In Exodus 3.20, or 33.20, uh, Moses, you know the story, he goes up in the mountain and, and he's, he, he really is desiring to know the Father. He's been, he's been in a tent, he's meeting him in a tent, he's listening to him, and God calls him up on the mountain. His presence, there was a greater experience. He comes to the place where he can't hold it anymore. He says, God, show me your face. I want to see you. I want to see you. And look at what it says, you cannot see my face. This was God's answer. Read it. You cannot see my face, for no man shall see me and live. And people, because of a natural thinking, not spiritual minded, they think that nobody can see God. But look at what God says later on. He says in 2 Chronicles 7, 14, if my people who are called by thy name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I'll hear from heaven, forgive their sins and heal their land. What, what caused the, what's the difference here? He says, if you see my face, you'll die, but I want you to see my face. Because he wants us to die. I'm going to show you another scripture is still here um, uh, in this. And he says this. He says, when you said, in Psalm 27, 8 through 10, this is David. He says, when you said, seek my face, my heart said to you, read it, your face, Lord, I will seek. He didn't say, well, wait a minute, you told Moses that we die. He says, no, I'm going to seek your face. Look at the ninth verse. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my help. Do not leave me or forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, the Lord will take care of me. Here's David, a man after God's heart. One that's seeking God. And he says, I realize one thing. i got to seek his face. I need to see him face to face. Because what's in me that is, isn't right, what's in me that I would work all my life to try to deal with in my emotions, in my psyche, in my mind, with thousands of dollars with counselors, drugs because, to take because of depression. One glimpse, it's gone. That dies 
in me. The axe has to be laid to the root of the trees so we can start producing fruit for him. Amen? Look at the ninth verse again. He says, do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. Wow. What happened between Malachi 3 or 4? The hearts of the fathers are going to turn to the children. Hearts of the children of the fathers. Otherwise, I'm going to come and smite this earth with a curse. You think it's bad now? Wait, wait till we see during the millennial or during the trial, uh, the seven years of tribulation, when we're taken out of here, and, the, and God says, "Here, you didn't want a father. Here's a curse, man. They're going to beg to die." But He says here. He says, don't hide your face from me and don't turn your servant away in anger. What about Jesus? Something happened during this time that Jesus is in this earth that not only fulfilled covenant uh, of uh, a new covenant with God, but fulfilled this promise to where all of the love of the Father now can come into our lives. Talking about Jesus being unjustly beaten and judged as a crook and crucified with thieves and murderers. I can't even imagine what he went through. But look at Acts 8 and 32. Are, are you following me? He says this. He was, read it. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter and as a lamb before its shears is silent so he opened not his mouth. Of course, there's quoting Isaiah 53, 7 there. But here's Jesus, the only one that can actually be just in complaining or crying or, or getting angry at the people for crucifying them, for beating them, for mocking them, for scourging them, for rejecting them. His own disciples, his apostles, running away from him, hiding in fear. But he opened not his mouth. Otherwise, the Father's curse would have came. But instead, we see in Revelation 22, the Lord, grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Jesus opened not his mouth. Like a lamb led to the slaughter is silent. He didn't say a word. That's why the Lord told us, look at Psalms 116 and 13. Read it. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. And we cry and complain rather than going to the Father. We self-justify, but God, you don't know what they did to me. If we would just zip it, humble ourselves, just go to the Father and let there be a change, we'd start producing fruit that we would never ever pay enough to anybody to get. We'd start allowing a change in our lives to the degree we'd see an element of life that we never ever imagined before. We really, really know, Father, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done in this earth, right here, as it is in heaven. See, it's more than just a religious prayer that, oh, it's time of the service, let's say the Lord's Prayer. Most people think this verse is just, I, the only time you hear it quoted is at a, is at a funeral. Because they, they, they uh, uh, refer it to the natural death. And yeah, it's precious to the Lord that they died. Oh, baloney. And that's the thing with baloney. It doesn't matter how you cut it, it tastes the same. No. 
Paul said this, I die daily. He says, in Ephesians, remember? Three. He says, I desire that you faint not at my tribulations for you. For this cause I bow my knee unto the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family of heaven and earth is named, in whom the whole fatherhood of all heaven and earth is named. I'm bowing my knee to him during this tribulation. The seeds come into that tender heart. We want to protect that tender heart. <clears throat> and the more we work to protect it, the harder it gets and the more bitter it becomes. But when we say, Father, forgive them, they don't know what they do. We allow the Word of God to go deep in. And all of a sudden, boom, 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 boom. Them wonderful, wonderful eggs become impregnated by the Word of God that are deposited in your heart. Ones of success, ones of production, ones of giftings, ones of calling, ones of wealth, ones of blessings, ones of talents and skills that you never imagined. All of a sudden they start coming up and you become a new man. Everyone, doesn't matter who you are, you can become a different person. That's the great thing. We're made of earth. We're made of dirt. It's what the seeds we allow sowed. That's why Jesus says, you know, people that end up not going to the Father, but they return to what the, whatever it is, the drugs, the stuff. What, it's like a... Dog returning to its own vomit. They think somehow that their help is going to be relieved. The pressure will go away when that's the pressure that we need. <clears throat> the thlipsis in the Greek, that pressure that crushes that seed because unless the seed fall in the ground and die, it abides alone. need to come to Bible college, go to my class on the Fellowship of Christ's Sufferings. There's a purpose. And it's because he's raising up huios, sons of the living God. And all of creation right now is waiting for the sons of God to manifest. Not religious icons, religious ideologies, but sons of God who walk in the spirit of liberty and the spirit of life. We're come to a time where, <clears throat> of the greatest time of revelation of worship this world is ever going to know. Ever. And you are supposed to be a part of it. Doing what you see the Father do. Saying what you hear the Father say. Today's the day. If you're watching on the internet, maybe listening by radio, wherever you are, I know this hit a home run. I felt like Babe Ruth this morning, man. I knocked one out of the park. But I never could have done that unless I built. And that's why line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little. So that when we come to these places, I'm trusting God. That your heart is open to say yes. If you've never ever been born again, today is the day. Jesus, Paul said, today is the day, now's the acceptable time. Don't say you have tomorrow, don't even say you have this afternoon, you don't know. Today is the day. If you need Christ in your life, Now's the time. You will become a brand new creation. And maybe you're in here and like last week, you know, we had folks that recommitted their life to Jesus. 
repentant of their sin, of not really following God. Maybe that's you. There's no such thing as a closet Christian. It's either out in public or it's nothing. So if you're in here, you're out there, wherever you are, I want you to just stand up, acknowledge. In here we can stand up. Just stand up and say, today's my day. I, I want to become who God needs me to be. I want all that he has for me. I, I'm giving my life to Jesus Christ. Just stand up in here this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's the thing about being backslidden, you know. It, 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 religion makes it seem like it's okay. I'm okay because, you know, I, I don't cuss, I don't chew, I don't run around with women that do, kind of a thing. By standards, by man's standards, by the, even the Old Testament said, I look pretty good. Well, that's not where it's at, it's you knowing in your heart. Isn't this, this is liberating, guys. The spirit of liberty. He's not giving us a spirit, calls us again to bondage, but a spirit where we're going to cry out, Dad, 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 I need you. I, I need you, Dad. I need you. Above all others, above all, I need you. Just lift your hands to him where you are. Say, God, forgive me. My, you out there listening now on the radio or by the internet, wherever you are, ju just say with me, just say, God, forgive me for not following you, for not living for you. I did what I knew, but what I knew was wrong. So I give my life to you, Jesus. I'm all in. Come into my heart. Give me a new heart. And put your spirit in me now. I trust you, Jesus. Father, I'm now your son. I'm a child of Almighty God. Brand new. Never existed. Teach me to live with you. And let you live through me. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen and Amen. Give the 